Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Joel. In this video, I would like to share with you the way I structure my Power BI data model to perform variance analysis on my forecast, comparing different versions of rolling estimates against one another. Let's go. First, let me show you the different tables I have in this model. I have a date table which is similar to other data models. Then a forecast table with sales volume broken down by the different food types and rolling estimates versions in monthly buckets. Just to be clear, a rolling estimate in my job is forecasting future estimates of the year taking into account actual for the previous months. For example, if it's a rolling estimate prepared in February, it will be having actuals from January and forecasts for February until the end of the year. Next, we have the product table where it shows my revenue and costs for the different food types. Also, I have another folder where I store my measures. Within this folder, I have a measure sales revenue by multiplying the sales volume and its revenue depending on the food type. Now we are clear with the data model I have, the next thing I want to do is to perform variance analysis. Compare various rolling estimates version and understand where the major changes are coming from in our rolling estimates. Let me start by creating an index table for my rolling estimates version so that I can arrange it from the oldest to the newest. Since there will be a new version every month, I prefer to have this index table to be dynamic adding new versions into the list when it is available in our forecast. To do that, I will create a query that is referencing to the forecast table. Right click on the version column and remove all other columns. Then remove duplicates and you will be left with the unique version list. Under add column, use the add index function to add an index column. I will rename my query selected version over here. Then Click on close and apply. Once the query is loaded, navigate to relationship view. Make sure to remove the relationship between selected version and the forecast table. If there is a relationship between the selected list and the forecast table, it will filter out data of the forecast table that is not part of the selection and you would not be able to compare different versions as only data for your selected version is available. Next, create another new table and I'll name it as comparator version and I'll reference it back to the selected version table. Check the relationship view again to make sure there is no relationship between your forecast table, selected version list and comparator version list. Let me start to build up a slicer to allow user to select. For the first slicer, use the version column from selected version table as its fill. Ensure that single select is turned on to ensure that users can only select a version every single time. For the slicer header, change it to selected version. Change the slicer into a drop down to save some space. Go back to the table view. Look for the selected version table. Click on the version column, then sort by column and select index. Do the same for comparator version table. This would change how the versions are sorted and will improve user experience as it is sorted based on how recent is the forecast. Add in another slicer and this time, use the version column from the comparator version table as the field. I will change the slicer settings to be the same as the previous one, except for the slicer header where I will label it as comparator version. Next, I will start to build measures to visualize the variance between the two selected forecast version. For the selected version sales revenue, the expression for the measure would be calculate sales revenue, filter the forecast table where the version is equal to the selected forecast version. Let me validate this by creating a matrix visual and pull in the measures. Here, you can see the selected sales revenue for May rolling estimates is 103,000, but the rest are blank. See what happens when I change the slicer selection. It will instantly switch to the version that I have selected. 
Now that I know this expression is working, let me build a similar measure for the comparator version. Using the same expression, I will just replace the selected version table with the comparator version table. Let me validate it again by putting it into the matrix visual. It is working as we expected and its value changes based on my comparator version slicer. Now that I have validated the numbers, I will remove the version from the row field and replace it with foot type. Then remove sales revenue measure from the table as it is irrelevant for our analysis. Now I will create a variance measure which is the selected sales revenue minus the comparator sales revenue. Create another measure to identify the variance in terms of percentage by dividing the variance with the comparator sales revenue. Visualize all the measures created in a table and change the formatting based on your preferences. With the table, we will be able to understand which foot type contributed to the variance when we are comparing March rolling estimates and April rolling estimates. Besides using the matrix visual, I will also include a bar chart as part of my visualization. Place the variance measure in the values field and foot type in the axis field. You have a bar chart that displays variances between the two forecast versions and the values are the same as the table above. To better visualize this, change the data color depends on your KPI. In this case, since lower revenue is less favorable, I will set variances below 0 as red and those above 0 as green. Before proceeding, I will create another measure that adds sales revenue for both selected and comparator forecast version together. The third visual that I use very often is the waterfall chart. To set it up, place the newly created measure into values field and version into the category field. For the breakdown, you can input the factors that is driving the variances. In my case, that would be foot type. Now, we are able to visualize how May rolling estimates numbers change from the April rolling estimates. We can also place a line chart to help with trend analysis for the different forecasts. Place version in the legend field then the sum of both forecasts in the values field. Place date hierarchy in the axis field. This would allow us to analyze the quarterly or monthly trend of our forecast. To filter it down to a specific food type, simply click on one of the categories in the bar chart or table and it will show the sales revenue forecast trend for the individual category. This is how I built up my variance analysis dashboard from scratch. Please note that this is currently how I'm structuring my data model and by no means the only way or the most efficient way to do it. If you are interested to build a dashboard that allows comparison against multiple versions, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. I will be posting it real soon. If you enjoy this content, please give me a thumbs up as it always reaffirms that the content that I'm creating is valuable. That's all I have. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.